What's up? This is gonna be your advanced kettlebell circuit. So it's gonna be a 10 minute workout. We're gonna do a density round style. So we're gonna do as many reps as we can. And this is gonna be follow along. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so this is gonna be a 10 minute density round. We're gonna go as many reps as possible. We're gonna go for repped sets here. All right, so we're gonna start off with a rotational clean to catch. Ready, we're gonna go five reps here. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna rotate, and I'm gonna clean off to the side. I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna go five reps here. So I wanna use a lot of tension. Three, four, five, and down. I'm gonna switch sides. I'm pulling, so I'm using the same mechanics as I would for a swing, but instead of letting that belt travel out, I'm going to pull, rotate, pivot off that back leg, squeeze, and catch. So I dig this exercise. It's just a fun variation to add into my pulling repertoire. Shake it off. I'm gonna go into a dead start rotational clean into a side lunge. So I'm gonna clean it and then go off to the side into that side lunge. So pivot off this leg. I'm gonna pull, keep that momentum going, catch right back to that starting position. Ah, pull, catch. So however deep you go is as far as you can go. So even if it's just off to the side, that's fine. Just make sure as you're doing this, knees are traveling over toes. So always pointing over toes. Four and five. Ooh. Not gonna lie, that one kind of sucked. That was very burny right in that leg. All right, we're gonna go to the other side. So as you can see, we're going right side, left side, right side, left side. So for this, we're gonna pull and lunge. So I like using kettlebells for movements like this and for exercises or workouts like this because we're definitely getting some strength in, assuming you use a heavy enough weight, but we're working through multiple planes. So we're working the transverse plane here, we're working frontal plane here. So that's what makes kettlebells so powerful is being able to go in these multi-planar exercises. So we're not just getting strong in one field. So typically we do things in sagittal where it's all a lot of bending. I'm squatting, I'm deadlifting, I'm pulling, I'm swinging. I got a three-dimensional body. I wanna be able to move in all planes. All right, so next one we're gonna do, we're gonna go into a rotational press into a back lunge. So there's gonna be a little bit of movement and pivoting going on. So I'm going to press, and then with that back leg, I'm gonna lunge. Come right back down. Press, back leg, right back down. So key thing here, besides making sure that your pressing mechanics are on, is make sure you're pivoting enough so when you do the lunges and you get into each one of these positions, you're not torquing your knee or anything. So I wanna have a full pivot. So right here, all I have to do is get that bell back, get that leg back. So size. So worst thing you can do there is pivot, do like a half pivot, and then have your front knee kind of internally rotate, your front leg internally rotated, and then trying to like torque your body. Don't worry about the reps. Get the exercises down perfectly first. All right, let's do this again. So the way I want to do this, do this from the side so you can see my foot position. So once I'm in this position right here, notice I'm already staggered. So now feet are in perfect alignment to get into that back lunge. All right, so I'll go from this side. Two. So a common mistake with that press is overpressing and then getting into this hyperextended position through my upper back. So keep that arm vertical as you press. I like to keep my other hand either on my rib or on my hip to really engage that tension. So if I keep it on that position here, that's gonna help me avoid hyperextending. So if you don't have that range of motion, don't force it. I definitely don't force it with weight. That's what people who get hurt do. You're not one of those people. All right, so we're gonna go back to the first set. That was that clean to catch. So every one of these exercises is five reps. And if you're doing this and you're like, Marcus, five reps is too heavy. You suck it up, you do it anyway. No, just make it work for you. If three reps is all you got, three reps is all you got. If the way super light, do a few extra reps. Or after you're done with this workout, do it again, put me on mute so you don't have to hear me again. 
and the abs cage. Ah, two, three. Make sure you're driving with the hips on this. You're staying up tall, so I'm not hyperextending. And so I like that one. Get a little bit more arm engagement. All right, let's go into that dead start rotational. Right into that side lunge. Oh yes. So once you get good at this, you can start moving pretty quickly through them, transitioning pretty fast. I should say seamlessly. What I want you to avoid doing is moving too fast. So don't rush through it. Definitely don't rush through it. All right. So that's the beauty of this. You can go at my pace or you can just keep moving at your pace. Take rest as you need. All right, let's do the other side now. Let's start rotation clean. So I'm getting that rotation. I'm getting that pull. I'm getting that side lunge. So that knee dominant position here, knee dominant movement pattern. So I'm getting some quads, some glutes, definitely some hammies. Unfortunately, no calves. But I like incorporating side lunges. If you're one of those dudes, it's typically dudes, no offense dudes, but you're not into the side lunges. You're like, yo, why do I do side lunges? I'll just do squats. I'll do, it's called making sure that we keep nice, strong hips. We strengthen our adductors. That is going to help us maintain that strength that you build doing bilateral sagittal stuff like squats and deadlifts. Because if you're super, super strong, you can squat 500 pounds. But as soon as you get into a side lunge, you feel your groin's about to explode. Got news for you. It's probably gonna explode. All right, right into that side lunge, or into that rotational press. Whew. That hand, just to keep that engagement throughout your anterior core, through your front side. Because what I want to avoid again is hyperextending here. So I want to keep that tension. I want to keep <coughs> that engagement from my sternum down through my core, as opposed to getting too much, too much movement back there. Ah, oh, other side. So now we're just getting right into it. Keeping that engagement. So I like that rotational press. That's just another way to add some variety into my pressing. Still getting that front delt, still getting triceps, still the same movement pattern, but now just adding another piece to it. As we get a little bit more lat serratus, all these things up in here. That's all getting a little bit more love. Oh. And just overall trunk. Your glutes are gonna be firing. Everything's gonna be going. I was about to, I was doing finger guns. That was pretty late, but you know I was trying to go with that. All right, let's go back into that clean to catch. We'll probably have time for at least the clean to catch and the clean to rotational arch to side lunge. Squeeze. So I want this pause at the top for just a second. So I have to create that tension. Think of it as like a, a standing rotating plank. Abs tight, getting into that pelvic tilt at the top, so I'm squeezing my glutes. If you're feeling any tension on the lower back, immediately apply more tension to your front. That's gonna help balance the load. Even with that, if you're still feeling it, then put the belt down, rest for a second. But we wanna keep as much tension through my core, through my trunk, through down, all the way through my glutes. So your abs are not necessarily your trunk, but they are a part of your trunk. Your trunk is more encompassing than that. <clears throat> uh, increase dramatic effect. And down. Oh man, I'm getting sweaty. So this is a great workout for some strength and conditioning. But if you wanna make this purely strength, just increase the overall time and just rest a little bit longer so you could use something significantly heavier. All right, let's get through this one more time. So, dead start. Clean right into that side lunge and repeat. Make sure when you're in that side, that rotated position, shoulders are above hips, keeping those lats engaged so that we don't fold and round into the pressure. So I'm still driving through that leg, same as I would if I was doing a clean, a traditional clean. So what I don't want to do is get lazy about this and just kind of half 
wholeheartedly and pull with my upper body. All right, last one, five. You got this. I believe in you. If that bell is slamming on your forearm, just use that other hand on the catch. So essentially you're using like a training wheel. Three. Four. And what I love about this is you can just take a kettlebell, take it anywhere. You got bird squirrels, people walking around. Fantastic way to get a workout in. Oh, so that was it, 10 minutes. That's all you need to get a fantastic workout anywhere. If you like this, let us know, give us some love. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so that you can catch all these amazing workouts with your kettlebell, your body weight, your bat ropes, all the fun stuff that we've got at Living.Fit. And if you want even more in-depth workouts and tutorials and full programs, check out Living.Fit.